Alleluia, Christ has risen. The Lord has risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning on this beautiful morning. It's supposed to rain later, but we'll see. It's still wonderful to see spring and all these terrific flowers blooming all over the place. Boy, is it good for the heart uh, and soul. Uh, so, and the body too. So good morning again, and uh, welcome to this service of morning prayer at uh, Trinity Episcopal Church in Southport, Connecticut. We're coming to you live, and uh, if you don't, uh, you want to see it sometime again during the day for any reason, uh, well, we're available online, Facebook or YouTube, just clock in and you're there. Uh, we're going to be following the Book of Common Prayer. If you do not have hard copy, uh, it's available online. Uh, bcponline.org and you can follow along this morning uh, we're going to before beginning on page 80 uh, we're marking uh, today the feast of Anselm commemorating Anselm the Archbishop of Canterbury just a few lines from his bio rather interesting fellow uh, who lived uh, in well we'll go through it he was born in Italy his name was really Anselmo and he was born around 1033, and he took monastic vows in 1060. Uh, he succeeded his teacher as prior of an abbey in Normandy and became Archbishop of Canterbury uh, in 1093. His episcopate was stormy in continual conflict with the crown over the rights and freedom of the church. His greatest talent lay in theology and spiritual direction. Anselm is also the most famous exponent of what's called the satisfaction theory of atonement. Anselm explains the work of Christ in terms of the feudal society of the day. He was tied by that concept. So if a vassal breaks his bond, he has to atone for this to the Lord. Mercy, mercy. Likewise, sin violates a person's bond with God. I'm not going to ridicule that in any kind of way, but the Supreme Lord in atonement or satisfaction must be made of ourselves. Uh, we can't do that. Only Christ can do that as a perfect person. Well, that is called a theory, and there are other theories, and so we'll look at that today in Scripture when we do Lexio Divina. Uh, we're going to find a word, and we're going to find in Scripture perhaps something even more profound. It's not that Anselm was wrong, uh, but I think it's deeper and richer, and we'll have a chance to see what that means. So let's turn to uh, uh, page 80 uh, and uh, begin with our prayer. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Let us turn to uh, our first uh, reading from the day, uh, the epistle of John, John 1, uh, chapter 5. And we're going to do Alexio Divina again, uh, just to review that we've been doing it the last several weeks. We've only done one reading, and we're going to continue doing one reading, but the classical model is to read the same passage four times. Well, that's a lot in a short morning, and we've got to get our days going. But I'd like to introduce you to the concept because you may want to come back to one of these passages later on during the day or any time you're reading Scripture to see how you can enrich the appreciation for how Scripture applies to your life. So the four steps are reading God's Word, Lexio, divine reading, a reading. The second step, reflect on that word, meditatio. The third, respond to the word, oratio, prayer. 
and the fourth, contemplation, or con contemplatio, resting in the word. I'm only going to read it once, and I'll walk you through the first three questions. The fourth question is for you to consider, contemplate, reflect during the day, or any time your heart moves you to do that. It may apply to your life. Who knows? We'll see. But in any event, let's begin with John. And again, as you listen to this reading, see if there is a word or a phrase that strikes you. And you know, when we listen to somebody reading, our minds just drift. That's okay. You don't have to listen to it all. But if there's something that struck, strikes you and you perk up, well, that's where your spirit is moving. So to begin... Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. There are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God, that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, just take a moment. What word in that complex reading came to mind? What leapt off the page? Let just, just repeat it over and over again in your mind. I'll give you a few seconds to do that. Word or phrase? Again, rather than reading the scripture a second time, if you're doing this alone, then read it a second time and reflect on the word, meditatio, reflect on the word that struck you or the phrase. Just reflect on it. What is it saying to your heart? What is it making you aware of? And at this point, we would read it a third time and hear that word or phrase that struck you, that moved you, respond to it. Does it strike you in a way that brings consternation or comfort, consolation, disconsolation? Uh, does it just cause you to think more things that you don't have an answer? And that's okay. That's the the next step, the contemplatio, the resting in the Word of God. So I'll give you a few seconds to do that, folks. <clears throat>
All right, so let me share my reflection. I didn't come up with much consolation here. I came up with question. I found the passage in the same uh, challenging. Uh, I got caught on the part about uh, God has testimony, has placed ca those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. And immediately I went into my head, not my heart. And what does that mean? I mean, those who do not accept Jesus Christ don't have the testimony of God in their hearts. The golden rule doesn't apply. Or the two greatest commandments, to love the Lord your God with your whole heart and to love your neighbor as yourself, doesn't come to mind. So there's the contemplatio part. I've got to think about that. Are there many paths to the kingdom of God? And we know from Jesus, in terms of what he said, that the kingdom of God is within. That spirit of life is within the here and now. Not the kingdom at some future point, but today. So what does that mean? Well, when we start taking care of one another, that's love. This is the body of Christ, the enfleshed God, here and now. But something to think about. I have no answers here. It would take a lot longer. It would be great if we could sit and in Alexio, we'd be able to share and come up with further insight. So you might want to take this passage and do some reading and reflecting upon it. Uh, let's now move to Canticle number 8, the Song of Moses. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my Savior. This is my God, and I will praise him. The God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. Let us now turn to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4. And again, we will do Alexio. I'll guide you through it. What word strikes you or phrase as I read this? After leaving the synagogue, he entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked him about her. Then he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. Immediately she got up and began to serve them. As the sun was setting, all those who had any who had any who were sick with various kinds of diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on each of them, and he cured them. Demons also came out of many, shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak, but because they knew that he was the Messiah. At daybreak he departed and went into a deserted place, and the crowds were looking for him. And when they reached him, they wanted to prevent him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other cities also, for I was sent for this purpose. So he continued proclaiming the message in the synagogues of Judea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So folks, what word or phrase struck you? Let's take a moment and reflect on that and see what occurs. The second step of Alexio is reflect on that word, relish it. What does it say to your heart? What does it say? Word or phrase? Let's go to step three. Respond to this word as the listening deepens. It might be praise, thanksgiving, a question, a consolation, a petition, or prayer or intention comes to mind. What question? <clears throat>
allow me to share my reflection, my responding to this word. This time in the passage, in, in preparing for today, this morning, I had other words, but right now I was struck by this one. Proclaim the message. Proclaim the message. Not in the synagogues. Proclaim the message. What is that message? Is it Anselm's message? The saint whom we venerate today? Uh, is it this atonement theory that only the Christ can satisfy? Or is it deeper than that? What is this message? The message is one of good news. Uh, and then I begin to associate uh, Rowan Williams, uh, a more recent Archbishop of Canterbury, and look at what he turns to. Atonement theology or theory is not what gets him. It's the life within, his prayer life, and his relationship to that message. It's a message that renews life and gives us hope. And so it's not an either or. So for those who have hope and faith in Jesus Christ, who shows me how to live and how to die and how to hope and how to love, I've got a model there. Uh, and it's that life in the spirit that moves me. Uh, but those who do not profess that kind of way, well, that's a question. And Rowan Williams, or the theology of Bonaventure, or Francis of Assisi, uh, Teilhard de Chardin, and cosmic theology, all of that stuff. Wow, it's, it's rich, with a lot of stuff to contemplate. So what does that mean for us? Well, I'm going to stay with the message. I like that word. What's the message? And so if I move to step four, Contemplatio, what's the message for me today as I interact with people, interact with nature? How can I deepen my life with that message? Let's turn to canticle number nine. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. There's a message. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Glory to the Father, glory to the Son, glory to the Holy Spirit, indeed. Let us now turn to the prayers. The Lord be with you and with all of us. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us our trespasses against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Turning to the suffrages, the second set, let us together pray. Serve your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord, have mercy. Show us, Lord, your mercy and love, for we put our trust in you, and you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. The Collect for the Third Sunday of Easter. O oh God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A Collect for the uh, celebration of the Feast of Anselm. Almighty God, you raised up your servant Anselm to teach the church of his day to understand its faith in your eternal being, perfect justice, and saving mercy. 
provide your church in every age with devout and learned scholars and teachers, that we may be able to give a reason for the hope that is in us through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us offer our prayers of thanksgiving and petition uh, in silence right now, coming before the throne of Almighty God, coming in, into that kingdom which exists within each of us. Let us pray for those we love, for those who are in need. For justice in our country. That justice may prevail for those who are marginalized and put aside, for black and brown people, for the poor, for those who suffer. Let's pray for an earlier end of the pandemic, the success of our vaccines, and that more people will be moved to take that vaccination. All children and students. Let us pray for those on Trinity's prayer list. Corey, Andrew Baker, Sam Brown, Colonel Peter Rowan, Anne, Gwen, Stephen, Shea, Patria, Swan, Joyce, Miller, Robert, Lillian, Whitney, Janet, John Rogers, Philip, and anyone you may wish to add to the names just mentioned. Let us pray for the repose of the soul of Peter Swan, for the repose of the soul of one of my friends who just died, Cindy Puccio. Let us pray for all of those who have died from coronavirus. Let us pray a collect for social justice. Almighty God, who created us in your image, grant us grace fearlessly to contend against evil and to make no peace with oppression, and that we may reverently use our freedom. Help us to employ it in the maintenance of justice in our communities and among the nations. To the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as we may be, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us forevermore. And just an announcement again, an invitation to join us for morning prayer Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. in the morning or later on, YouTube, uh, Facebook, and please contact me through the parish website. My name again is Harry Schmitz, and I'd be glad to welcome you to one of the uh, sessions we hold each week, Sunday night at 5.30 and Tuesday night, only a half hour of silent meditation. Come to the Trinity Southport Meditation Room. Uh, you will find refreshment there. I'd love to see you. All right, have a great day, folks. Take care.